So the topic of our second lecture is uh, related to the general mapping of uh, Indian folk art as we discussed earlier also that it covers a wide range and that is spreaded uh, connectively as well as sporadically throughout the country. Uh, when I say that it is connective at the same time sporadic, uh, I meant something uh, perhaps deeper and I indicated the connection uh, that is uh, due to the cause that uh, they are based on the common uh, textual references namely Ramayan, Mahabharat, Jataka, Purana and there are also secular subject matters, the current social issues, political contents, uh, it is full of it. If we go back to the earlier evidences of the folk art and uh, minor art uh, as well as come back to the contemporary practice, we see that the range uh, evolved from being religious to uh, secular in the modern time. Uh, but then that is something which is also uh, is a matter of a proper study. We must also see how the market demand is operating the factor. We still have a fixed mindset uh, that whenever we are making something which is connected to folk art and minor art, it has to be traditional. So, it is like uh, if I quote Jyotindra Jain in uh, this particular issue, he wrote that every time when we see the traditional painters uh, like the folk painters uh, who are practicing in a traditional manner, we expect them and we tell them that uh, you know make something traditional, traditional banao, but then why should we impose that on them? We do not say that to the contemporary artist that you do something uh, traditional. Uh, so, these are the matter that uh, needs a thorough discussion, but before that I think uh, we should not take it for granted and we try to see that uh, you know what how they are spread it throughout the uh, country. And it is also true that you know when I say it is sporadic, uh, there is another condition that you know they are abrupt in their zonal uh, existence and the region practices are also unique in their visual character. The text must be same, maybe uh, they are working on Ramayana Mahabharata in all different states of India, but it, it changes the visual style changes from zone to zone and from time to time. So, that makes it all uh, more uh, fascinating and it also makes it more relevant and uh, issue and a topic of our discussion, it makes it more academic and uh, that is the beauty of it. Uh, however, let us see that uh, how like we can incorporate all those ideas and also match them with the available examples. Uh, so, in that context I must also mention that it is not possible for a course or even for a um, particular research to include all the um, intricacy and the variety of folk art visual art style that exist all over in our country. So, it is very important that we pick up the most relevant ones which are the most popular well known and significant and then study that. Uh, at the same time we also try to justify by critical analysis, critical viewing that when we say that they are the most relevant ones, they are the most uh, important ones, uh, are they the right choice for us? Are we uh, picking up the right examples? For example, if we uh, talk about Madhubani painting which is almost known to everybody, whether we know its uh, intricate detail, the complexities or not, but for us Madhubani painting is commonly understood all over. So, that way uh, if we consider it as something which is part of a habitual practice, it is a ritualistic practice that is uh, connected to some customary uh, beliefs and uh, habits, 
then this is also true that it spreaded all over in North India and also part partially the South Indian regions. But then we talk about Madhubani, we do not include all sort of uh, wall paintings into it. Though all pa wall painting is getting done on uh, ephemeral surfaces, ephemeral foundations, but it is it's the Madhubani, that zone that made it so famous and so relevant. And that is something what justifies that you know there are certain connection, there are certain history, the history of evolution, the consistency that they maintain throughout that made it so important. So, with that, uh, let us also uh, try to see that you know how folk art is an expression of world's traditional culture uh, that expresses the authentic cultural identity of the ethnic communities by conveying the shared community values and aesthetics. Uh, having said that, I must also clarify that uh, not everything that is uh, practiced in a community is considered as art. There are lots of things that is uh, practiced in a community, uh, but then maybe like each one of the people in the community, they practice a similar kind of uh, artworks, but there are a few people who mastermind them and that perhaps gives it a status of art. So, we must also go to those deeper aspects of understanding certain things and what to pick up as art and what not to pick up as art and just call it as a practice or uh, that is something which is just meant for the sake of it. So, uh, ritualistic connections are of course, like that works as the operating factor for it, but that is not the only thing uh, that makes it so famous and relevant. So, in that context, like when we say the elements of folk art is established on a strict method of its kind, it, it does not follow uh, the general academic rule, but it also undergoes certain uh, rigid rules and operations that makes it very, very relevant. So, it has its own rule, its own canon and there the operating factor that basically nurtures and uh, develops the fiber of this practice. So, folk art has its own meaning, its own uh, grammar, its own value and restrictions. Uh, they are often derived from the ancient texts like uh, Vishnu Dharmotar Puran and many other texts that we are going to uh, discuss uh, slowly. Uh, this is like uh, very important to realize that uh, there are uh, artists who do not follow the accepted academic norms with, which is fundamentally representational. They often simplify the uh, figures, their uh, representational objects which are uh, often recognizable, but they do not look naturalistic. So, the conflict between being naturalistic and being recognizable come into the scene and that adds to the aesthetic continuum of it. So, the study focuses on the age old Chitrakatha tradition, where the artist displays his art along with the poetic narrative oration. It has played a significant role in proliferating the doctrines of the popular epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Jataka, Purana and other popularly cherished sagas from Hindu Shastra, local fables and folk tales and moral stories. There are a couple of uh, traditions that I will, I would like to use as examples like Madhubani painting in Bihar, Yamapata or Jadupatiya painting of Jharkhand region. Prabhuji ki Fard of Rajasthan, Patachitras of Odisha and Bengal, Matani Pacheri of Gujarat, Nathadwara Pichwai painting, Kalamkari painting of Sri Kalahasti, Tanjore painting and Kalamanjatu of Kerala. These are the traditions that I am going to use as example for this particular study and will go on understanding the visual range of it and that way it will go on. Each tradition that we are going to discuss is linked to a central deity or conviction, but slowly we are going to move towards the secular and uh, 
social practices which are much more relevant for the contemporary context. Madhubani painting in Bihar is a practice that is shaped from a prolific occurrence of domestic rituals which is essentially a regular observable fact in this region. It refers to its innate association with the life and spirit of the region and its inhabitants. The painting style of Madhubani folk art transmutes through many layers of their experience which the local meets and religious beliefs. Madhubani painting is well known for its purpose to celebrate social events like thread ceremony, marriage and childbirth. Most popularly, it in spite of being essentially consorted to the region, uh, to the region and region specific customs and beliefs, it is the evoking pictorial quality that has appealed the viewers all over the world. The uniquely wide range and variety pertaining a common style is caused by the shift of medium and also due to the rigid caste distinction of the region. So, when we talk about the rigid caste system, this is very fascinating to know and that is perhaps part of its thematic understanding which cannot be understood only by watching them because they are connected to the regular social occurrence which is very very private to a zone. So, upon doing some research one can make out that why the particular tradition has the variety of style. The variety of style could have uh, took, taken place uh, for many different reasons, but the fact is that it is ju the, just the caste based restriction that operated the entire happening. So, in a way when we see that one linear painting has some color feeling into it and the other one is just made with black lines, it is only because of the fact that a particular caste like the Brahmins, they are allowed to use colors in the paintings where the Kshatriyas are not allowed to use color in the painting. So, for the Brahmins, there are two techniques that they follow, one is called in the local uh, language to be the Kachni and the other one is Bharni. When we say Kachni, that means we are doing the contour line drawing and Bharni is the color feeling. So, by Kachni and Bharni, they can use many different colors, but it is restricted to the basic primary colors. Mostly, we get to see the, uh, them using yellow, blue and red, but often we see them using the oxide colors and the other vegetable colors uh, in uh, the traditional manner. So, they use rust, um, uh, permanent blue, uh, they use permanent orange often, they use, uh, they mix red with white and that is lime and they get uh, some kind of a pinkish tone for it. They also use lamp black for their artwork. So, it is like full of color, but the colors are very distinctively contoured. Uh, for the Kshatriya Brahmins, what we get to see that they are allowed to use uh, line drawings only. So, they use mostly the black and red linear patterns and their works are equally interesting, only we do not see Bharni in their practice. And then we have uh, the Dushad and the other community who practice Godhana Chitra that has derived from a tattoo practice of the northern Indian region. So, we get back and see that it has all started from the tattoo that they made on their bodies and finally, now they are uh, it, it's like a paradigm shift that they're doing it on a paper for a very long time, around 50 years or more, and they've got amazing success in their uh, artistic expression. They're widely accepted and appreciated throughout. So, uh, if we again go back to the style, then we see that there are four different style that is prevailing there. So. The caste wise distinctions are like this that the Mahapatra Brahmins who stay in Jitwarpur village, they call their style to be Jitwarpur Shaili. The Karnakayasthas 
in Rati, that is their village and uh, the Rati Shelly is known uh, and recognized for its linear quality. The Dushads are engaged in the Godhna Chitra, Godhna means tattoo. The pioneers are for this tradition, Sanjitvarpur Shelly, Sita Devi was the award winning uh, pioneer of this practice and there are artists like Ganga Devi, Mahasundari Devi, Yashoda Devi, Karpuri Devi and many more who are quite well known and uh, they are profoundly known throughout the globe. For Godna Chitra, Shanti Devi is a very uh, distinctive name and then Channo Devi is also another very important name who is much more modern and uh, she is no more. So, what we see in the pictures are the different kind of styles and we are going to study the detail of it, but these are some of the images that are picked up from that region and it gives us some picture of its practitioners. It appears from this picture, but that it was uh, initially a total feminine preserve, although there are many more male members who are coming to the practice and now. Uh, there are many male members of this community who are engaged in this practice. So, it is a very interesting uh, observation to make in today's uh, scenario that uh, just because it is no more a practice that is confined for all kind of uh, religious practices, it is also not compulsory for its practitioners to do it only for the customary reason, uh, reasons. Uh, they are now free to practice their artworks and uh, they are completely free to explore the kind of subject matters that they choose to express their artistic views. So, being a being or like uh, just beginning as a total uh, feminine preserve, a tradition like Madhubani painting has become widely taken. Uh, all over the globe and there are lots of uh, men who are now involved into the practice and they are making significant names in this field. So, Patachitra of Bengal uh, has two different very distinct tradition, one is Ekachitra and the other one is Dighalpata. The contents of Ekachitra uh, that has multiple hand painted images in rectangular frames with a single and continuous story, whereas Dighalpata that contains numerous paintings depicting an intricately interwoven story consisting of many parts in the form of a scroll named as Jorano Pata. Due to its rolled up form, the painters are to orate a narrative song while unscrolling and showing the Dighalpata. So, uh, in our lecture, we are right now trying to see that how they spread it. So, let us get introduced to another tradition uh, right next to it that is the Pabujeki Fad, the Fad tradition of Rajasthan. So, this type of painting is mainly found in the Bhilwara district of Rajasthan and the theme of this painting is to uh, depict the sagas of the local heroes and the legends and the story of their victory and bravery to establish certain kind of uh, respect for all these people and to encourage people and inspire people in many different ways. So, these are the artworks, these paintings that are usually made while using bright and subtle colors. The paintings that depict the and exploits the local deities are often carried from place to place and are accompanied by the traditional singers who narrate the theme depicted on the scrolls. The outlines of the paintings are first drawn in block and later filled with colors. The image shows another tradition which is very close to the similar kind of art style and they are made by a family. Uh, of Sri Lal Joshi and these are used as the fresco, the murals on the wall of Jawahar Kalakendra in uh, Jaipur and it was mainly made uh, as a commission work in an architecture 
made by Charles Correa. And we can see the way the Navagraha, Mandala and other things are depicted in it. So, they have a very strong thematic base and unless we know all those texts, it, it's very difficult for us to decipher the actual meaning of it. Nevertheless, we can enjoy it simply for its aesthetics, the quality of line, form, color, tone, texture, etc., etc. So, the picturesque village of Odisha also has a very distinctive tradition that is used to be known primarily for its Patachetra painting on dried palm leaves. Today, it is a popular tourist destination for the uh, for its wealthy uh, artworks and crafts, including the Talapata Chitra on palm leaf engravings, stone carving, paper mache toys and masks, wood carving, wooden toys, cow dung toys, tashir painting, uh, which is like a textile uh, silk, golden grass coir and the woven objects out of it the mel bell metal work and the inscription of pottery on pieces and threaded clothes and the dried palm leaf on paper. The process of Patichitra begins with creating a canvas on which the painting is to be drawn. A paste is prepared of boiled tamarind seeds and soft granite powder which is plastered on the stretched piece of cloth twice over so that it becomes hard and does not crack. The paper is then dried and the bare outlines of the paintings are sketched with charcoal or limestone by the master painter. It undergoes a long and elaborate process and one has to visit this place to understand them in a, a greater detail, uh, which is very fascinating. But just to know the region, we must know that uh, some of the prominent centers for this Patachitra art include uh, Puri, uh, Champamal, which is near Sonipur, and also the Denkanal district, which is very close to the Dinavandpur district. The painter who draw on the putter are called Chitrakars and the lane in which the painter is lived is called the Chitrakar Sahi. Raghurajpur has about 103 households and each family in the village on an average has three artists. Some of them are national award winners. Kalamkari from Sri Kalahasti is another very famous tradition that is based on a temple tradition of artwork and the temples were the major inspiration for the artwork. So, to understand the timeline and spread, it is also important that we understand its uh, visual importance and that will include the semiotic, thematic and iconic understanding of it. So, uh, in the semiotic level, we are going to understand quite a few things in our le next lecture. But before that, it is also important to realize that there are certain things which is connected to the culture and it is very difficult to separate these three layers as far as this particular topic is concerned, because the complete knowledge in this domain can only be achieved uh, once we consider these three layers and try to see more examples and understand the basic timeline, the zones uh, with the uh, kind of quality of the artwork. So, we will do a thorough analysis of the same from the next lectures onwards.